so how, how is that process coming along? When should we expect them? What, what can you tell us about, about that? I know that it's a delicate process, so you, I know you don't want to. <laughs> right. I can tell you that we've been receiving a lot of invitations from various organizations that are eager to schedule them. And we've begun accepting them and telling them that we're going to begin the conversations of trying to set up the parameters. But there's a, there's a lot of interest in this because people are excited about the opportunity to have an open seat and excited about the opportunity for not just to hear our points of view, but for them to be able to weigh in and say, these are the things that we think are important. How, how many debates do you think is a reasonable number and are you willing to commit to? I don't have a set number in mind, but what I do think is important is that there's regional balance because during the course of my listening tour, I'm making a point of covering the entire state. And that's important because there are certain industries that are specific to certain areas. And the way in which the Attorney General interacts with that area would be specific. So I think it's not just about the number, but it's making sure that there are debates around the, around the state to make sure that everyone's able to participate. Uh Obviously, the, there's a Supreme Court vacancy open, and, and I know this is some, there are some questions that you've been asked, and, and I have some questions for you, because certainly there's, there's uh, a case that made its way from Illinois uh, to the Supreme Court, the Janus versus sure. AFS, AFSCME case, so uh, we know that these state-level issues can, can make their way there, so the, the, the president's uh, nominee is, is a big deal. Uh, so I want to ask you about um, uh, Brett Kavanaugh and, and okay. some, some cases that, that uh, he has, or some opinions and dissents that, that he has been involved in. And I should tell mind. you that I'm like everybody else, that I've not yet had the opportunity to read all of them. I was, you know, like everyone else, looking to see who it would be. And so, you, obviously, you see his resume, you see his academic credentials and in the, the scope of his legal career, but I, like everyone else, am in the process of trying to absorb what his jurisprudence is at this point in time. Sure. Well, he has decades, obviously, of, uh, I think he's, he's been working in law longer than you and I have, have been alive. So. <laughs> he, ha he, he has a pretty extensive career. Well, uh, there's a Seven Sky versus Holder case, which was uh, dealing with, with Obamacare. But um, in part of his dissent, he said a future president could choose to void Obamacare by not enforcing it. His justification being if uh, a court held a statute constitutional, he said if a president deemed otherwise, it could simply be his or her choice. Uh, does that seem a valid interpretation of the Constitution? That, I don't believe he is suggesting something that is different from the way in which the Constitution is normally interpreted. And obviously he will have to explain during the confirmation process what he meant. I believe very firmly in the separation of powers and that everyone is subject to the Constitution. And the way in which our framework of government is instituted, it is the Supreme Court that is the final arbiter of interpreting the Constitution. And so Judge Kavanaugh will have the opportunity to say what he meant by that. But I think it's very important to uphold the rule of law, to uphold the Constitution, and to make clear that it's the Supreme Court that's the final arbiter. Uh, certainly, Illinois is a uh, somewhat, I guess, unique state as it relates to gun laws. Uh, it can be very strict in some areas and uh, in other communities. We've seen certainly over these last few months uh, counties uh, declaring themselves as gun sanctuaries. And Kavanaugh has uh, ruled a ban on assault weapons to be unconstitutional. Um, and he, and of course, in communities in Illinois, have done uh, just the opposite. Uh, what is your interpretation? Should communities in Illinois be able to make their own decisions as to whether assault weapons uh, should be banned? It depends on the scope of the statute. When you're dealing with anything that affects constitutional jurisprudence, it really comes down to the wording of the statute and you can't speak in hypotheticals and it can't just be something where you're imagining what it might look like. It really comes down to the details. And I think during the confirmation process, Judge Kavanaugh will have the opportunity to explain his interpretation of the Second Amendment Obviously, the rule of law has to be upheld, and the Second Amendment has to be upheld. But beyond that, it comes down to what the individual statute might look like. But we have communities in Illinois right now that have those bans in place. And uh, there have been cases that have made their way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has, not, has chosen not to hear those cases at, at this time, or at that time that those cases made, made, their, made their way there. Well, these resolutions 
are many states attorneys say that they are not actually influencing the way they are enforcing the law so they don't actually affect a legal change in the law it's an expressive value where communities who feel that their second amendment rights are not being upheld they're expressing that as a value so i don't think you see the same sort of collision of rights or competing interests that you would in other circumstances and uh, one of the other uh, cases, or I guess this would rather be in a law review article, Kavanaugh said Congress might consider a law exempting a president from criminal prosecution and investigation while the president is in office. I don't know if you've, you've seen this one, but obviously this has a lot of people uh, given them some concern, obviously, because of the situation that President Trump is in. So do you think that's a good idea? Uh, because it, it gives some people the notion that the president could be above the law while he or she is in, in office? Well, I can tell you, I certainly didn't read the law review that you're referencing. And my guess is most people have not. But what I would say is that everyone has to be under the law. And our Constitution makes clear that presidents can be impeached and removed if they engage in high crimes and misdemeanors. And so Judge Kavanaugh can explain what he meant by that. I would not I would not, I would really wouldn't venture to say what he meant by it, only he can say that. But I think it's important that our rule of law be upheld, the Constitution be upheld, and that anyone who's going to be on the Supreme Court uphold that. All right, fair enough. Uh, the, the last question I have is, is obviously what is, what's next for uh, the Erica Herald campaign for Attorney General in Illinois? We will continue our listening tour, visiting communities throughout the state visiting with different social service providers, businesses, industries, and citizens, because it's important for me to not just be an attorney general who sets forth my own ideas. I want to make sure that I visit every community and hear their ideas. Under our Constitution, the attorney general is the chief legal officer of the state. You are the people's attorney. You're their advocate. And I want them to know that I care about their communities, I care about them, and I will fight for them as our next attorney general. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. Your time.